Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is commitment problems. And the big question here, which is quite the non sequitur, is whether your humble lecturer is actually a villainous drug dealer. This story starts out in 2010 in San Diego. I was a recent graduate of the University of California, San Diego, and I had been admitted to the political science PhD program at the University of Rochester. So I decided to pack all of my belongings into a tiny little Honda Civic, cover the back with a blanket to shield those items from the prying eyes of a thief, and set out across the country. Now, for the purposes of this story, you need to know that I am a big Angels fan. And so rather than taking a direct route from San Diego to Rochester, I timed my departure from San Diego so that I'd be about halfway across the country when the Angels were playing in Texas, in Arlington, against the Rangers. So rather than making a direct trip from San Diego to Rochester, I decided to pass through Arlington. I had joked with some of my friends that if there was going to be a problem on this trip, it was going to be in Texas, that there was going to be some sort of big problem with the police officers, and it would cause a huge disaster. But of course, that was just a joke. What I didn't realize at the time is that, in fact, this would actually happen. And in fact, it didn't take long. El Paso is right over the border from New Mexico, and just as I got into El Paso, I got pulled over. The ranger had seen my, my vehicle, he had seen my license plate, and he had seen the blanket that was covering all of the stuff. And so when he pulled me over and I rolled down the window, he started talking to me about that. He had come to the conclusion that I was a drug dealer and that he needed to search my vehicle in order to prove it. Of course, I know a little bit about the law, and so I told him, heck no. This is an illegal search and seizure. He doesn't actually have any real evidence of the fact that I'm a drug dealer, and I have a perfectly legitimate story about how I am, in fact, a future PhD student at the University of Rochester, and I'm moving across the country, and those are my earthly possessions in the back. It's not a bunch of drugs. The ranger knew that I had him beat, and so he decided to try to bargain with me. He told me that I can either let him do a quick little search here, or we could wait a while, about a half an hour, for our canine unit to arrive from the next station over. Now, at the time, it was pretty hot, and so he was bargaining with me, telling me that, you know what, if we wait for this dog to arrive, it's going to be worse for both of us because it's so hot out here. Why should we bother waiting? You could just let me do a quick little search of your vehicle, and if what you're saying is true, in fact, if you are not a drug dealer and you don't have any drugs, then you can just go on, and it will be no big deal. Now, I took that offer, and I said, heck no, once again, I'm not going to trust you on that. I'm going to wait, and the reason for this is because of a commitment problem. To see that, let's illustrate the interaction. So at the time, the ranger had offered me a choice. I could wait for the canine unit to arrive, or I could give him my consent so he could conduct a legal search of my vehicle. If I allow him to conduct that search, then it's up to the ranger to decide whether he's going to honor that commitment to conduct a quick little search of my vehicle or to be really thorough. And we're going to assign the payoffs as follows here. Remember, my numbers are in blue, the ranger's numbers are in red, and bigger numbers are better. My best outcome is for the ranger to conduct a quick search of my vehicle. He'll see that there's nothing there, and I will be able to get on my way, and we won't be standing in the hot sun for half an hour. My worst possible outcome is for the ranger to tear my car apart, because again, everything I own is in that vehicle. I got clothes, I got glass, I got delicate belongings, and I don't want braking, and I don't want stranded across the side of the dust dusty dirt road there. So that's the worst possible outcome. Waiting for the canine unit is somewhere in the middle. Now, for the ranger, his best outcome is to conduct that thorough search, because that's going to maximize his chances of finding those drugs. His next best outcome is to conduct a quick search, because at least it gets him into the vehicle and means he doesn't have to wait around for a long time. His worst outcome is to wait for the canine unit to arrive. Now, to solve this, I need to figure out what the ranger would do if I allow him to conduct a search. So let's isolate that move, and let's isolate his payoffs. The ranger gets more from the conducting the thorough search than conducting the quick search. Remember, the ranger would like to conduct a thorough search. It's his ideal outcome. So if I allow him to conduct a search, the ranger will conduct a thorough search. Now I can erase that quick search and then allow me to think about this in terms of what my optimal action is, whether it is to wait for the canine unit to arrive or allow the ranger to conduct a search of my vehicle. Well, isolating my payoffs, I get two if I wait for the canine unit to arrive. If I allow a search to happen, then the ranger will be thorough, and I'll get a one. In other words, I'll get my worst possible outcome if I allow the ranger to conduct a search of my vehicle, because ultimately the ranger will conduct a thorough search. And as a result, it is in my best interest to wait for the canine unit to arrive. And so that's the outcome. That's exactly what happened. I waited for that canine unit to arrive, and we got those payoffs here. 
Now, this is really interesting because if we compare what actually happened to what the ranger was suggesting I let him do, if I let that ranger conduct a quick search of my vehicle, the ranger was right. It is, in fact, better for both of us to allow the ranger to conduct a quick search of my vehicle. I get a three from that quick search as opposed to getting a two from waiting from the canine. The ranger gets a two from the quick search as opposed to getting a one for waiting for the canine. Both of us do better by allowing the ranger to conduct a quick search. The problem is, however, that the ranger can't credibly commit to conducting that quick search, because if the ranger has a choice of what type of search he wants to conduct, he would prefer conducting that thorough search, because that thorough search gives him a better payoff than conducting a quick search. And so as a result, we end up in this situation, which is bad for both of us, where I just wait for the canine unit to arrive, and we both do worse than if I had allowed the ranger to conduct a quick search, and the ranger actually conducted a quick search. Now, this is what we call a time inconsistency commitment problem. There are two elements to a time inconsistency commitment problem. The first is that there exists an outcome that is better for both parties than the outcome that actually occurs. That's true here. Going back to the previous slide, we see that the outcome that actually happens is waiting for the canine unit to arrive, and the outcome that's better for both of us is for the ranger to conduct a quick search. The second quality of a time inconsistency commitment problem is that we need to have one player if he could credibly commit to a certain action in the future, then the players would be able to reach that mutually preferable outcome. In other words, we would be able to get to this outcome down here, this quick search, if it were the case that the ranger could somehow erase the possibility of him conducting the thorough search. In other words, if he could credibly commit to saying, in fact, although it is better for me to conduct the thorough search, I would actually conduct a quick search if you allowed me to search your vehicle. If he could somehow credibly commit to following through on that, to forcing himself to conduct the quick search, then there's no reason for me to fear the thorough search, and we can get to this outcome where the ranger conducts a quick search, and that outcome is better for both of us. So the reason that we call this the time inconsistency commitment problem here is that the ranger's preferences are time inconsistent. He would like to be able to say up front that he would prefer to conduct the quick search when in fact at the time he actually has to make the move and take the action, he doesn't prefer the quick search, he prefers that thorough search. So that's a time inconsistency commitment problem, and now you're probably wondering, what the heck does this have anything to do with civil war? Well, that wraps up this lecture, and in the next lecture, we will see that this exact situation that I discussed here is what we see in ongoing civil conflict. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.